This is story time and I am Mrs. Pooja Brover, your storyteller. Today I am going to narrate you a story, The Grupello's Child, written by Julia Donaldson and illustrated by Axel Scheffler. In this story you will see how a mouse saves his life by his intelligence and why Grupello's Child was so much curious to see the small mouse. So, to know these surprises, get ready to enjoy the story, The Gruffalo's Child. Gruffalo said, No Gruffalo should ever set foot in the deep dark wood. Uh, why not? Why not? Because if you do, the big bad mouse will be after you. I met him once. I met him a long, long time ago. What does he look like? Tell us, Dad. Is he terribly big and terribly bad? I can't quite remember, the Gruffalo said. Then he thought for a minute and scratched his head. The big bird mouse is terribly strong and his scaly tail is terribly long. His eyes are like pools of terrible fire and his terrible whiskers are tougher than wire. One snowy night when the Gruffalo strode, the Gruffalo's child was feeling bored. The Gruffalo's child was feeling brave. So she tipped out, out of the Gruffalo cave. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild into the wood. Went the Gruffalo's child. Aha! Oh ho! A trail in the snow? Uh, whose is this trail? And where does it go? A tail popped out of a low pile house. Could this be the tail of the big bad mouse? Out slid the creature. His eyes were small and he didn't have whiskers. No, none at all. You are not the mouse. Not I said the snake. He's down by the legs, eating Gruffalo's cake. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the Gruffalo's child. Aha! Oh ho! Marks in the snow? Whose are these claw marks? Where do they go? Two eyes skinned out of a treetop house. Could these be the eyes of the big bad mouse? Down flew the creature. His tail was short and he didn't have whiskers of any sort. You are not the mouse. No, oh, wow, not I. But he is somewhere nearby, eating buffalo pie. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the Gruffalo's child. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh ho! A track in the snow? Whose is this track and where does it go? Whiskers at last, and an underground house. Could this be the home of the big bad mouse? Out slunk the creature. His eyes were not fiery. His tail wasn't scaly. His whiskers were not wiry. You are not the mouse. Ah, no! Not me! He is under a tree! A drinking Gruffalo tea! It's all a trick! 
said the Gruffalo's child, as she sat on a stump where the snow lay piled. I don't believe in the big bad mouse. But here comes a little one out of his house. Not big, not bad, but a mouse at least. You will taste good at a midnight feast. Oh, wait, said the mouse. Before you eat, there is a friend of mine that you ought to meet. If you will let me hop onto a hazel twig, I will back on my friend so bad and big. The Gruffalo's child clenched her fist. The big bad mouse? So he does exist? The mouse hopped into the hazel tree. He beckoned, then said, Just wait and see. Out came the moon. It was bright and round. A terribly shadow fell into the ground. Who? Who is this creature so big, bad and strong? His tail and his whiskers are terribly long. His ears are enormous. And over his shoulder, he carries a nut as big as a poultry. Oh, oh, Dad. The big bad mouse! Yelled the Gruffalo's child. The mouse jumped down from the twig and smiled. Aha! Oh, ho! Whose are these footprints? And where do they go? The footprints led to the Gruffalo cave, where the Gruffalo's child was a bit less brave. The Gruffalo's child was a bit less bored. And the Gruffalo snowed and snowed and snowed. So students, this is the story, the Gruffalo's child. In the story, again, the mouse has saved his life by his intelligence. Hope you have liked the story, students. Thank you so much.